Our Father, we thank you because of the grace which is made available to everyone. That as many as will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And so, Father, we are praying today, you'll equip us that we will be able to tell of your grace to people who still have not known in Jesus' name. Amen. And for those who are here who have not experienced the power in that grace, we are praying that you will reveal that power with the grace to everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. As we come together to study, we are asking that your word will have an impact upon every one of our lives. In Jesus' name, we pray. We always have a great privilege every Monday as we come for the study of the Bible. And I'm so happy whenever we come on a Monday like this to see how many of us are present with our Bibles because of the love we have for the Word of God. And particularly, am I grateful for all people who assist in the Bible study, ushers, members of the choir, Zona leaders and the coordinator, everyone. I'm praying that our studies as we go through every Monday will make us the men and the women God wants us to be in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we'll still be studying from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8. I read to you from verse 5, and then I'll go from verse 5 to verse 12. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Verse 12. But when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. As we look at this passage, I want us to think about the great commission that Jesus Christ gave before he left. He gave it to the church at that time. And through them, he's giving it to the church of every age. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, 19, and verse 20, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Jesus came to the disciples who at that time were fearful because the circumstances around them made them to have some apprehensions and to feel afraid of what the future held. Just like many Christians today are afraid because of what they see, what they hear, what they experience, and what they look at around them. But then, today, as then, Jesus is still saying, all power has not been given to anyone you see. Or all power has not been given to the circumstances, the forces around you or around me. But all power has been given unto him, both in heaven and also in earth, both in the unseen realm and also in the area of the world where we see. He has power over spirits in heaven. 
He has power over beings in the air. He has power over all men on earth and over all matters on earth. And because of that all pervading authority and power, he told the church, go ye therefore. On the basis of that declaration of all power belonging to Christ, go. Because you will never get into any situation where that power will not be in manifestation. Go, because there is nothing you will meet which has not been foreseen from all eternity. Go, because the devil, will all, with all his agents, they bow prostrate underneath that power. Go, because as long as this age remains, that power will know no failure. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations. Now, as you think about this great commission, there is a part belonging to the evangelists and to the soul winners, to the church. And there is a part belonging to the people of the world in their response to what the church is doing. Now the part of the evangelists, the soul winners, the church. Go. Don't search. Go. Don't stand in one place. Go. Don't fold your arms and think the world will come to you. Go. Don't be passive about it and think if they want to get saved, they will come, they will call, and they will search. You go. They may be apathetic about it because they don't know what the gospel holds. But you go. As you go, what do you do? Teach. In various ways. And as you teach, whatever the methods you are using, you are teaching them the gospel which has power to save. And then when they respond, it is your responsibility to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Already you see two stages there. Number one, you go and teach them the gospel. Give it to them. And as many as respond among them, there is a second step. You baptize them in water. And when you baptize them on the basis of their testimony, on the basis of their yielding to the Lord, you baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. What does that mean? The word baptize means actually to immerse and to dip something into liquid. I'll explain more of that later. And as you baptize them into the name of the Father, you are putting them right into the Father and they get to the very center of the Father's heart and into the Son. They are becoming identified with Him and also into the Holy Ghost. You are baptizing them in that name because all three personalities of the divine trinity have been involved in their salvation. Now after that they are baptized, they continue and you teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Now, already this is saying something. Let the evangelist go out. Let him teach. Let the soul winners go out. Let them teach or preach about the Lord Jesus Christ. When the people respond, let the evangelists and the soul winners make sure that they get baptized in water. The moment they get baptized, listen to me, they are getting identified with God and getting identified with the body of Christ, they come into the church, and the pastor is taking over from the evangelist. That pastor now is able to teach them about family life. I mean, family in the family of God. The life of the believer is feeding the flock, and is telling them about the life of the children of God in fellowship and family and worship and praying and, and service and sacrifice teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And then the teacher will be assisting the pastor, laying line upon line, precept upon precept, and teaching those who have already been converted, saved, born again, and baptized in water, and they are now part of the church. The teacher is now busy going along with the pastor, teaching them the word of God, the doctrine, 
of the word of God. All that I've commanded you. And then he says, Lo, you'll never feel lonely while you're doing it. You'll never feel forsaken while you're serving the Lord. You'll never feel that you are rejected when you're serving the Lord. You'll never feel there is a lack, there is an emptiness, there is a vacuum while you're serving the Lord. I'll be right by your side. I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. From, from that time to the end of the world, many things will happen. Jesus said so in Matthew chapter 24, I'll just tell you. He talked of wars and rumors of wars, but he said, you go along and keep on doing the work because until the end of the world, whether there are wars or not, rumors of wars or not, I'll be with you until that end. You'll see changing circumstances. You'll see earthquake and pestilence. You'll see economic conditions changing. Many things will be changing in the world until the end of the world. But then, as you see those signs, remember, those things will be happening in the world. And you'll be going into that world and giving them the gospel. And I will be with you always, always, always till the end of the world. You'll be in Jerusalem where the Pharisees and the scribes will be raising up persecution. You know what? I'll be with you. You'll be going to Judea where there are uh, people that do not actually love the people of God. But you know what? I'll be with you. You'll be in Samaria where the people hate the very name of the Jews, son of the Christians, son of Christ. But I'll be with you till the end of the world. Not only that, you'll be going to the ends of the world. And that end of the world of paganism, heathenism. Filled with witches and wizards, with evil spirits and evil powers, and with all things that are paganistic. But you know what? I'll be with you until the end of the world. That then gives the believer the authority, the opportunity to be able to go to anywhere in the world as long as this age is still standing. Because we're given the promise until the end of the world. Now, that's a part of the church. That's a part of the church. To go, to teach, to baptize, to feed those who are incorporated, integrated into the church, and keep on teaching them the entirety of the gospel, of the gospel message. But now, the part of the world. As we go, they are to open up, and they will, because the hearts of the kings they are in the hands of the Lord. All those people out there, they do not have the ultimate control of their lives, of their hearts. And if you are wondering, will they hear? The one who created their ears will open their ears. Will they see if I open it up to them, the message of Calvary? The sacrifice from Calvary. Will they see it if I paint the picture, if I remind them of Jesus who died for them? The creator of heaven and earth who created their eyes will touch their eyes with eyes cells. He'll make them to see. Will they understand the one who made them and created their minds and their hearts? Will open them up to the scriptures. Over and over and over in the Bible you read of something. The people whose hearts the Lord has touched. At the time of Saul the king, the first king, when they said they wanted a king, and some people were saying, will this man reign over us? God touched the hearts of the people. And the hearts of the people whom the Lord has touched, they received that man. And when David came to the throne, we are told that they were seeking for him because the Lord had touched their heart, opened their eyes, they were seeking for him. You know when Nebuchadnezzar was coming from the seventh season of a calamity that came over him, when he was coming out of that experience, again, the Lord had touched the heart of the people in Babylon and they were seeking for him. And you read over in the New Testament, over and over again, the hearts of whom the Lord has touched. The outside there, the Lord is touching their hearts. And as soon as you go with the gospel, obedient to the Lord, the Lord is opening them up as the morning, as the leaves are opened up to the morning light. Teaching them, they are receptive, they will be. And then they are submitting themselves to water baptism. After they are born again, they come into the church, they continue with the church, and then you teach them all that God as commanded through Jesus Christ. Anything, 
everything he has commanded. We keep on teaching them, and then the Lord is with the church until the end of the world. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and verse 16, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now he's giving us this great commission. And he said, Go ye, go ye into all the world. Again, let me remind you that if sinners are to come, we are to go and bring them in. If sinners are to respond, we are to go and talk to them. Because on their own, without hearing a message, without seeing a friend, without being helped by a believer, they will not voluntarily stand up and come to the Lord. The Lord is going to use his hands, members of the church, his feet, members of the church, his mouth, members of the church, members of the body of Christ, to reach out and go out and bring those people to come in. Go ye into all the world, all the world, all the world. Have you ever realized, as we stand, as we stay here tonight, how much of the world is represented? Have you recognized as we stay here tonight the women in the world represented the men in the world represented the young in the world represented the old in the world represented the language areas in the world represented have you recognized tonight how many parts of Nigeria many states in Nigeria are represented have you recognized here tonight how many people have traveled beyond this country having friends in West African countries, East African countries? Have you realized tonight as we're here that we have many people having contacts with Europe, with America, with Australia, people who are sitting here tonight? And already we have sitting here today part of the whole world. And we have the capacity, the ability, we have the possibility from this very center of gospel outreach, from this miracle center where God has planted his name and his word, we have the ability to reach out to all the language areas in this nation. We have the ability to reach out to all the men, all the women, all the educated, all the illiterates in this nation by the people that are here if we will only be obedient to what jesus said go ye therefore and go into all the world and as you go preach the gospel preach the gospel to every creature he that believeth, and he will believe he that believeth. There is something in the word of God that is so attractive, so magnetizing, that will draw a longing sinner, desiring sinner to the, to the feet of, of Calvary. He that believeth, they will, because the heart of man is looking for a good story. It's looking for good news. It's looking for the way out of trouble, out of sin, out of the attack of the devil. The life, the heart of man is looking for something that will deliver, and you have it in your hand. You have it in your mouth. You have it in your heart. And what Jesus is saying, bring it out. The good news. The gospel message. You contact the world. And you contact the world in various ways in the day in which we lay. There is the personal contact. There is a contact over the telephone. There is a contact over the newspapers. There is a contact because of letter writing. There is a contact because of the friends who have scattered all over Nigeria and all over the world. And as you contact them, you preach the gospel. They will believe. They will believe because they have been wandering, waiting for the message of the gospel. And it says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. How careful we must be 
to preach the gospel in a believable manner. You know people that tell a good story in a bad manner, in such a way that the people are not able to believe the good story. You know the people that talk about a good item, a good commodity, and their salesmanship method is so bad that the people who are needy and who will normally have received, they reject it. You know how even a bad commodity, something very bad, something very destructive, can be marketed, can be, sell, can be sold in such a way that the person talking about a bad thing will talk in such a good way that the people are scrambling, struggling for it. Now you have the good thing in your hand, the gospel, the good news. And it's a good message that everybody needs. And if you will tell that good message in a good way, of course, many more people will believe. You, th you need to think about that. That in the world in which we live, everybody is always selling something. Everybody is always selling something. It may be just spare parts selling something. Maybe food item selling something. Or it may be just a great idea. An idea that is so great to its own heart. Everybody is always selling something. It may be a philosophy of life. Everybody is always selling something. The billboards are put there to sell out something. The television is there. And it is to make people sell out an idea. The radio is there. It's to make people sell out something. And there is publicity for almost everything on the face of the earth. Now, we Christians have the greatest thing everybody, anybody could ever sell out. Because it contains life. It contains happiness. It contains intimacy with the only living God. It contains eternal life. You have it and you're able to live with God in eternity. It's a great commodity. And you have it in your hand, you have it in your life. And you need to go out and sell it out. That is, give out the idea. You tell it in such a manner that anybody that listens to you will say, that's for me. I cannot do without it. Wouldn't it be wonderful if the majority of the people that listen to you as to tell the good news will say, that sounds good. That looks like good news for me. That seems like something that is indispensable for my life. That seems to be the answer to the problems of my life. That seems to be the pearl of great treasure hidden in the field. I've been searching for all these years and now you are telling me this thing it seems it will do me good wouldn't it be wonderful if every believer every christian will have the ability to be able to proclaim the gospel preach the gospel to every creature in such a way that the person you tell will say that's what i've been searching for tell me more i want it right now and it can happen it can happen but you see it depends on the way we tell it the way we speak it out and I believe that, you know, with your consecration, I know you are consecrated, with your desire coming every Monday, every Monday, there is something in your heart. You yourself, you are seeking for something. You're looking for something. And you know, every time you groan, you cry, you say, oh God, why am I so foolish? Why is it whenever I tell the good news, it doesn't sound as good as it ought to be? You're looking for something. You know what Jesus said? He that seeketh, findeth. And I'm praying to God. Whatever it is, that thing you're seeking, that makes you to come every Monday like this, you are going to find it. Amen. We're all seeking for wisdom. To be able to tell that story in a wonderful way that people will receive. We're always searching, and some of you are going to the bookshops and you are buying books. Some of you are listening to these cassettes. Some of you are asking your friends, how do you do it? How do you do it that you tell people and they respond? As sure as you are seeking, you'll find in Jesus' name. Amen. And it will be so wonderful as we go out telling people of the good news, of this great message. And then they believe, 
Then they come into the church, they are baptized, and they are saved. The other side is that he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. You know, the word follow is a descriptive word. Have you found children playing together? And uh, one child wants to run around. But now he depends on the other child because the other child is older. And all the time he's beating him at the back saying, Stand up. Stand up. And keep running because I want to run after you. Because as long as you are sitting down, I cannot run after you. Stand up. Stand up. I want to follow after you. The word follow is a word for motion. And the word of God is saying, These signs shall follow them that believe. The people that believe that there is no power in the gospel. The people that believe that those people waiting outside there, they need the gospel. The people that believe that if I tell those people the gospel message, they will hear, they will believe, they will respond. And the signs are waiting like a little child patting you at the back saying, rise up. I'm a sign, I'm a miracle, I'm a wonder, I'm in the supernatural. I want to follow you, but as long as you're sitting down folding your hand, closing your mouth, and not telling the good news to anybody. How can the signs follow? Stand up, stand up, because I want to follow you as signs and wonders. You see, like those two children, one telling the other, rise up and keep running and keep going so that I can follow you. You can only follow the person that is on the move, that is going somewhere. Now, the signs will be following if we're getting something done. In the office, in your place of work, in the house where you live, telling a friend, telling a neighbor. And you know, as, as long as you are doing that, you are carrying out your faith, and you are, you are sharing your faith, and this sign shall follow them that believe in my name. You go out in that name, you are preaching that name, and you are telling the good news in that name. This sign shall follow in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. Listen to me. These are the signs that follow the people who believe and are going somewhere. You know, people wonder, I wonder why I cannot cast out devils. You get started. Preach the gospel. Tell somebody the good news and tell it in such a good way that it sounds as good news to that other person. And the signs will be following you, casting out devils, speaking with new tongues. I wonder why this uh, experience has not been given to me. Well, are you just sitting down, expecting the power to come? Are you just folding your arms, expecting something to come upon you? The signs will follow, will follow those that believe. And because they believe, they are on the move. They shall take off serpents. There are no serpents in the room. There are no serpents in the church. There are no serpents in the upper room, upper chamber. The serpents are out there where the unbelievers are. And if you go out after them, you'll take off serpents and they will not hurt you. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. There is no deadly thing to drink in the church, no poison. It's saying that if you go out into, into that world and you're giving the gospel to every creature, whatever may happen, you do not fear circumstances because the master, the Lord that has sent you is above all circumstances because God has given him a name above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things on the earth and things under the earth and if you're on the move and you are going out and preaching the gospel nothing shall be able to hurt you nothing shall be able to hurt you nothing shall be able to hurt you they shall lay their hands on the sick they shall lay their hands on the sick not just on Thursday you don't want to just be a spectator you want to be a performer. You want the Lord to, uh, to be following after you with signs following. And it's going to be so. You know, everybody that came into the presence of Jesus in those days, the power of God just came upon them. 
And you don't think that you are just coming in vain. You know, I hear some people say, uh, I come to Monday Bible study, I come on Thursday, I come on Sunday, but uh, well, there is no change in me. You don't say that anymore. Don't say that anymore. You cannot come into the presence of the Almighty God and remain the same. It is not how you feel. It is not how tall you are. It is not whether you are feeling heat or feeling cold. It is that if you take it by faith, you come into the presence of the Almighty God, you will never be the same anymore. You know the problem? You think you have nothing, and yet you have so much. Listen to me, I told you this before. I'll tell you again. Underneath you, where you are sitting, there is enough water to feed or to help this whole city. It only takes digging. If we will allow the people that drill borehole to spot out that just that where you are, that place you are sitting underneath you, if we'll allow them to dig deep enough, there is enough water to give to this whole city. Underneath where you are sitting, listen to me. Underneath you, underneath your head. In your heart, there is a place there. There is enough presence of the Almighty God. Enough to cast out devil. Enough to preach the gospel. Enough to tell people that Jesus came to die for them. And they will respond and run to Calvary. And have a deep in the blood of Jesus Christ. And get saved. If you will understand it and dig enough. Where you are. Where you are where you are there is enough power of god inside you if you will allow the holy ghost to just bring it out rivers of living water it is there i said it is there yeah. if you are born again god is living with you christ is living within you and the holy spirit is a companion and so you see, if we're on the move, we shall lay our hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, you do that when you get back home. Don't wonder what will happen. Let what will happen, happen. Preach the gospel. Lay hands on the sick. Help people that are near you. Because I've told you a secret today. Where you are, underneath that head, that you carry inside your heart there is enough power to heal the sick just like underneath where you're sitting there is enough water to give to all this city now it says in verse 20 and they went forth and preached everywhere the lord walking with them confirming the word with signs following they went forth they went forth they went forth and then the lord walked with them as they were going the lord was following after them confirming the word with signs following now this is what philip did and we come back now to acts chapter 8 verse 5 then philip went down to the city of samaria and preached Christ unto them. Verse 12. But when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Before they were baptized, he made sure that they indicated as to their faith they believed they believed and when they believed a change came upon them now check up in the bible when you get back home anywhere there is faith there is a change that blind man believed and jesus said be it unto you according to your faith the blind eyes became open there was a change 
that woman with an issue of blood said, If I just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. She believed and she touched, and there was a change, and the issue of blood stopped immediately. That man that had withered hand, the Lord said, Stretch forth your hand. And he believed something was going to happen, and there was a change. It became as the other hand. That man had clay smeared upon the eyes and went to the pool of Shiloh and went and came back seeing a change came because there was faith. The centurion came to Jesus Christ because of his a servant who was being tormented. And they said, you don't have to come to my house, but speak the word only. And Jesus said, I've not seen so great faith in Israel. He believed and the change came upon that servant. And we're told of the Syrophoenician woman that came to Jesus Christ because of her daughter, vexed of the devil, tormented by the devil. And Jesus said, it was a great faith you have, woman. And because of that faith, a change came in the home. You see that woman that was weeping in the house of Simon the leper. While Jesus was eating there and the washing off or cleansing of the tears of the feet of Jesus with the air. And then Jesus said, it's unto you according to your faith. She became saved. A change happened in her heart. Anytime there is faith, there is a change. If it is faith for healing, there is a change. If it is a faith for deliverance, there is a change. If it is faith for salvation, there is always a change. They believed. They believed. And there was a change. And you know when you believe today, there will be a change. Your heart will change. Your attitude will change. And you see, when a sinner comes to the Lord, when a sinner comes to the Lord, and that sinner believes, a change happens immediately. What he loved before, he loves it no more. What he did before, he can do it no more. And when you come like that as a sinner, and you say, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that moment you believe. Now that faith may not be mixed with emotion, and feeling and jumping and crying whether it is mixed with emotion or not faith alone is powerful enough to produce a change in the life of anyone that is believing and they believed fairly preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God what did that do for them it brought them out of the kingdom of the world into the kingdom of God it brought them out of darkness in the world into light because the kingdom of God is full of light. It brought them out of the hands of Satan into the hands of God. It brought them out of the environment of evil and defilement and corruption and brought them into holiness, into cleansing, into a new life in Christ. That's what's in the kingdom of God. Righteousness. They believe fully. Preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. And after that, they were baptized. Both men and women. Now, to be baptized, as I told you, means to dip something into, an, into liquid. And that means he took those believers who are that the evidence of faith in their lives, in their hearts... And he dips them, he immersed them completely into water in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Why did he do that? They were identifying with Jesus Christ. Crucified with Christ, they died with Christ, and they were buried with Christ. And they were raised up, new creatures, in newness of life. They were baptized. That's what Jesus said. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and what follows is baptized. After you have believed and there is an evidence of that believing, be baptized in water. And then we're told, go ye therefore, teach all nations. And after you have received that teaching of salvation and you are saved, you must be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And then come to verse 13. And then Simon himself believed also. You want to know three things in your life that is so important to God, so important to ministers of the gospel, 
so important to us here who are following the Lord and who are serving the Lord to bring you into the fullness of the gospel. You know three things that are important? They are in verse 13. Number one, believe. Simon himself believed also. Believe. Believe. This is a believable message. Christ is a believable personality. The blood of Jesus Christ working power in your life and cleansing from all unrighteousness is believable news. And the life eternal that comes into you when Christ is coming to you that will drive all your sin away, cleanse all your sins away and take all the sorrow, all the satanic attack away from your life. That is a believable power of the gospel of the kingdom that will set you free completely. Believe it. Believe it. And the moment you believe it, a change will happen in your heart. That's number one. Number two. And when he was baptized, that's number two. And you must take that step. You believe there is a change. And then you are baptized in water. Right now we're having a baptismal class on Tuesday. You say, well, why are we having baptismal class? Did they have baptismal class in those days? Listen to me. You can just grab everybody that comes on Thursday, everybody that comes on Sunday, everybody that comes on Monday, everybody will meet on the street and say, now, come on, we're baptizing people in water, come into the water. You can do that. You have to find out if they have heard the message, if they have believed the message, if they have got the genuine faith, the true faith, the living faith that has brought a change in their lives. You want to give them an opportunity to be able to listen to the word of God describing the life of faith and they will say, yes, that's what I've got. You want to give them the opportunity of hearing about repentance and they will say, yes, that's what I did. You want to give them the opportunity of hearing about believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you have a change. If any man is in Christ Jesus, is a new creature, all things have passed away and all things have become new. And they will say, yes, that's what happened to me. And after that, you can baptize them in water. That's the second step. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Number three, what is it? In verse 13, he continued. Wonderful. Number one, believe. Number two, be baptized. Number three, he continued. How do we know who is really converted? How do we know who is really a child of God? Look up here. As he believed. As he surrendered to water baptism. After that, as he continued, as he continued, as he continued, all the people of God, listen to me, a smoker, a drunkard, believing God, being baptized in water, and then if he finds it easy to continue with the people who don't smoke, people who don't drink, and he doesn't feel anything within him, he doesn't feel isolated and lonely. He doesn't feel anything for the drugs of the past and for the smoking of the past. And he just says, this is the best crowd I had in all my life. I enjoy following this crowd and continuing. That's a really saved soul. A prostitute who was a prostitute before, who had the message of the Lord Jesus Christ and then believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and was baptized, if she finds it easy to continue with the church, with the people of God, without uh, feeling the agony of separation from all those uh, men of the past, that's a really saved soul. A thief, a robber, who had been robbing, who was in a gang before, and now has believed and is baptized in water and is continuing. If he finds it easy and pleasure and it's a pleasure and it's a joy not say well I've missed my gang of the past but not just continues of the church joyfully peacefully and it's a glorious experience in his life that's a true believer now, three things number one believe and, the, and then a change will come number two you are baptized number three you continue let me ask you do you continue with the people of God do you feel convenient in the company of the children of God? Do you say, this is the gate of heaven? I'm so happy to be part of the church. 
all the smoking of the past and the drinking of the past and the evil of the past and the adultery of the past and the fornication of the past and the lying of the past and the bro and the robbery of the past and the bribery of the past and the corruption of the past i don't want them anymore i just have a nice time going along with the people of god i enjoy it that's a real believer continue continue that's a real believer and we're told Simon himself believed also and was baptized and he continued with Philip and wondered beholding the miracles and the signs which were done. Now, another step in verse 14. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Listen, something has been going on. Evangelist Philip had been doing a good work, a thorough work. One, he had preached to them concerning Jesus, concerning the power in the name of Jesus, concerning the message of the kingdom the kingdom of God now and the kingdom of God in future and the millennial reign everything in the totality of the kingdom of God telling the people the difference between the kingdoms of the world and the kingdom of God telling the people the authority the sovereignty and the totality of the kingdom of God both now and in the future not only that he had been telling them about obedience to the Lord Obedience in water baptism, obedience in fellowship, obedience in prayer, obedience in church life. He had been telling them that. Not only that, he had been telling them the necessity of being identical uh, to Jesus Christ. Number one, identity with Jesus, identifying with him, being baptized in water. But that's just a, a symbol. The identity within, having your heart so pure, so sanctified, so holy, that you are just like Jesus. You know what he was teaching them? He was teaching them that Jesus is the head of the church. And every member of the church must have a way of responding in perfect harmony to all the direction of Jesus the head. And I was telling them before you can do that, you must be sanctified in your heart. You must be purified. Not only that, he was teaching them of the Holy Ghost. Now, do you realize... When Peter and John came, they were not teaching the people about the Holy Ghost. He had taught them. Because, you know, Paul came to Ephesus. And Paul said, have you heard? Have you been uh, baptized in the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said, no. We have not even heard as to whether there be any Holy Ghost or not. But these people in Samaria, they didn't say they had never heard. I mean, Evangelist Philip had been teaching them. Not only salvation, not only faith in the Lord, not only water baptism, not only identifying with Christ, not only the kingdom of God now and the kingdom of God which is in the future, not only sanctification, not only purity, not only holiness, not only walking in conformity with the totality of the word of God. He had been teaching them about the ministry of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, the experience of the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And when Peter and John came, it was a simple thing, easy thing. They just laid hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. You can do that to people you have never taught if nobody had ever taught them somebody had been teaching them who when they were come when they were come down they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost let me tell you something he had been teaching them about faith because you know when they laid hands on them they just received and in verse 16, for as yet he was falling upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Look up here. Some people say, there is no evidence that people were sanctified. You don't understand. Look at Simon. Simon was saved. Simon was baptized in water. Simon continued. Why wasn't he filled with the Holy Ghost? Think about it. Why were the others filled? You know, it wasn't automatic. It wasn't automatic. They had been teaching the people. What, somewhere along the line, this man Simon had gone off. He had left the track. 
He was no more contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints in his own heart. He had lost out. He wasn't following. After everything he was being taught, somewhere along the line, he had left in his heart. That's why he wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost. And he just saw those people who were yielded, who were continuing, who were teachable. He was seeing them as they were raising their hands up and speaking in those beautiful languages as they were baptized in the Holy Ghost. And you know it so much interested Simon because it was a great sin. He had seen demons cast out by Philip. He had seen the sick healed by Philip. He had seen the wonders and the signs and the miracles by Philip. He didn't offer money. But this one, this one, when the apostles were laying their hands on the people who were ready, the people who wanted to drink in the Holy Ghost, the people who were ready for everything the Lord wanted them to have, who were saying, I am for the kingdom, the kingdom is for me. All my totality is for the kingdom. And I believe that the totality of the blessings and the provisions of the kingdom should be for me. I am committed to the kingdom. The blessings of the kingdom should be committed into my hands. And I'm all for the kingdom. And therefore, all of the kingdom must be in me. Oh, they receive, they receive. The power of the Holy Ghost and the anointing. And it came with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And he saw it, and he saw it. And then Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given. He offered them money. He didn't have it. He didn't have it. Why? His heart was at this time not right with God. He had backslidden. He had gone off. His eyes no more. Focusing on Jesus Christ. And in verse 19, saying, Give me also this power. You know, he didn't have the power. He didn't have the power. That Pentecostal power. The power of the Holy Ghost. And ye shall receive power when the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and in all Samaria, unto the uttermost part of the earth. And then he said that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee. Think about it. Think about it. A man that wants to buy the Holy Ghost, the third person of the Trinity, a person that wants to buy God, the Almighty, with money. Isn't he gone away from God? Don't you know who the Holy Ghost is? In the beginning, God made the heaven and the earth, and we're told in Genesis chapter 1 and then in verse 2, that the Spirit of the Lord hovered over the face of the earth. Job said, I was fashioned by the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God will come upon those judges and prophets in the Old Testament, and then he'll turn them to become supernatural. And then that third person of the Trinity, the Holy Ghost, mighty God, he wanted to buy his power with money. And um, Peter said, you must be a devil to ever think of buying the Holy Ghost buying the power of the Holy Ghost with money listen to me wouldn't that person be a devil who thinks they will buy salvation with money something that can only come through the blood of Jesus Christ wouldn't that person be a devil who think I will buy a position in the church with money when it came out of the risen Christ and he gave some apostles and he gave some prophets and he gave some evangelists and he gave some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the defining of the body of Christ. Will that person not be a devil for wanting to buy church position with money? Will that person not be a devil for wanting to buy heaven with money in my father's house and many mansions? If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And when I go, I will come again for you and because I will take you to myself so that where I am, ye may be also. Brethren, heaven is greater than money. You can buy it with money. Salvation is greater than money. You can buy it with money. Sanctification, holiness, the heart of Christ, the very mind of Christ is greater than money. You can buy it with money. And the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Power in the Holy Ghost. Greater than money. You want to buy God? You do want to buy a position in the church with money? You can do it. You know, Peter was so, was so terrified about a man that will be so full of the devil 
that will ever think of buying the power of the Holy Ghost with money and say thy money perish with thee because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. For thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Listen to me. Why did those other people receive the Holy Ghost? When the apostles laid hands on them, because their hearts were right in the sight of God, what does that mean? Sin is taken away from the heart. All the sins they were committing before, it has been taken away. That means they were saved. Not only that, the penalty of sin had been taken away. The guilt of sin had been taken away. The condemnation for sin had been taken away. Not only that, the power of sin, the depravity of sin, the inbred sin had been taken away. Because their heart was right with God. Their heart was in line with the heart and the mind of God. That is it. You get saved and the guilt will go, the condemnation will go, the pollution of sin will go. You get saved and then the penalty of sin will go. You'll pass from judgment unto life. There will be no judgment for you anymore. There is no condemnation now for those who are in Christ who walk after the spirit but not after the flesh. And then when you surrender yourself for sanctification, oh, the blood of Jesus Christ, the cleansing blood, the sanctifying blood, he'll just dip his hand into your heart and take away the Adamic nature and the inbred sin, take everything away and you'll become pure. You know what? Your heart will be so right with God. God will be near and you will be near to God. But you know, his heart was not right in the sight of God. And then he told him, verse 22, repent therefore. Now listen to me. When somebody who had been saved before backslides and his heart is no more right with God and he wants to come back to God, what is he going to do? He is going to repent, do the first works like he did before. Repent therefore. Of this thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee, for I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness, and in the pool, in the bondage, Simon, who was baptized in water, and who also continued with Philip, the evangelist, the man of God. Now he is in the gall of bitterness. He is in the bond of iniquity. What has happened? He backslid. And he didn't know in time. He didn't check it up in time. But you know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaker. And when Peter and John came, his heart was astray, had gone astray. He was no more right with God. And because of that now, he now came and said, Give me this and I'll pay you for it. Thank God for apostles. Thank God for men of God. Religious leaders, oh yes, you can buy them with money. Patriots, apostles in the world, in the church world, all these people who say they are ringing bells, carrying a rod, and they say they are apostles, those are apostles who can buy them with money. A thousand naira is enough. But you know, a real apostle. Think about it. A real apostle. The whole money in this whole world cannot buy an apostle. Cannot buy any man of God. And you ought to be that man of God. That woman of God. I told you that as you are coming every Monday, there is something inside your heart. That thing inside your heart, you desire, God will fulfill it in Jesus' name. But my brother, my sister, God is going to give you something with which will help this dying world. You will preach the gospel. God will heal the sick through you. You'll cast devils out. You'll speak with new tongues. The supernatural will follow you in the name of Jesus. But listen to me. Be a man, be a woman that can never, never be bought with money. Then, in verse 24, answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. He pleaded for mercy. You know, he didn't get angry. 
He didn't say, I had been a great man in the world before you are talking to me like that. Oh no, he wasn't going to get angry with a man of God, with an apostle having the power of God in his life. He just said, I know I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong. You know such people, they will get saved. You know such people, they have the mercy of God again because it doesn't matter how far you have gone. It doesn't matter how much you have gone into sin, how much you are backsliding. If you are saying, pray for me, pray for me, I know I'm wrong, you'll come back into the fold. And if today you find that you are backsliding in your own heart, in your own life, the Lord is expecting you back. And like a mighty army, all of us are going to rise up and we're going to go into all the world and we're going to preach the gospel in Jesus' name. Amen. And the signs Jesus talked about will follow every one of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Rise up and let us pray. The Lord is near you. And there is so much of the power of God available to you. If you are not saved, you turn away from sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are saved, are you baptized in water? If not, surrender yourself for water baptism. Continue. Continue. Continue with the people of God, with the church. He will. And then he can baptize you in the Holy Ghost. There is a great future ahead of every one of us.